Hey everybody, it's Caitlin, and today I'm going to be talking to you about gas gangrene. There are a lot of different types of gangrene. There is dry gangrene, in which it usually infects individuals with some kind of blood vessel disease. Wet gangrene is whenever there is a bacterial infection, but this is usually mostly affecting the upper tissue layer of an individual. Internal gangrene affects blood flow to the internal organs. Fournier's gangrene affects mostly the genital area. Melanie's gangrene develops a couple weeks after surgery, and it's where you develop these skin lesions. And gas gangrene, which is what this presentation is going to be focusing on, is whenever there's a bacterial infection to the deeper muscle tissue layer. So what these gangrenes have in common is that it usually just obstructs blood fl blood flow to the specific area and um, but there's they are caused by different things so over here is a picture of dry gangrene and as you can see it's it's mostly just this flaky skin um, and there's a loss of blood flow around the toes right here over here is wet gangrene, and it's caused by a bacterial infection, like I said. And over here is gas gangrene, in which these deposits are formed. And really, I'm just showing you these pictures to show you the different, how the different types of gangrene are different and how they appear on the individual. Gas gangrene is caused by a bacteria called Clostridium perfringens, and it is due to the infection of a wound, usually a surgical wound. And this type of bacteria is found commonly in the soil and in human intestines. And it has a very fast reproductive rate. I believe um, the reproductive rate is about six to eight minutes. And the characteristics of this particular bacteria is that it's gram positive, it forms spores, it's non motile, it's rod shaped, so it's bacillus. But I believe the most important characteristics of this bacteria is that it's anaerobic and as they grow they produce gas and that's why it's called gas gangrene. And these two um, characteristics are what's going to really determine its pathogenesis, uh, which is what I'm going to talk about later. So there are different strains of Clostridium perfringens uh, and it's classified by strains A through E. Strain A is usually what infects humans, and strains B through E is what infects other animals. And it doesn't necessarily have to cause gas gangrene in animals. It can cause different types of diseases. And these different strains are going to um, emit different exotoxins. So there is still a lot of research going on about exactly how this bacteria is pathogenic. But the researchers have come to the consensus that the bacteria can attribute its pathogenicity to the toxins that it emits. And particularly, particularly in strain A, these are going to be alpha toxins or PLC or theta toxins or PFO. What really interested researchers was the fact that there was little to none leukocytes at these infected areas. So what they concluded was that both the alpha toxin and the theta toxins affect the normal functioning of leukocytes. And they affect these leukocytes in different ways. PLC redirects neutrophils and it can cause um, clumps of platelets and neutrophils as well in the bloodstream. And so this keeps, this obstructs the blood flow from coming into the infected tissue, which means that the blood can't carry oxygen to these tissues, so that means that the bacteria is essentially creating a very great environment for it to thrive because it's anaerobic. Um, they also have been shown to affect cell metabolism and participate in hemolysis, which is the killing of red blood cells. PFO, on the other hand, has been shown to be cytotoxic to neutrophils, and it allows the bacteria to escape from phagosomes. The symptoms of gas gangrene are very distinct. Um, here is a picture of a very late stage um, of gas gangrene, and I believe this is taken before the patient is being um, 
admitted into surgery for amputation. And so what really is the hallmark of this disease are these air, um, air deposits under the skin and these blisters that are forming with this brown red fluid. And in the early stages of the disease, if um, you press on the site of infection, you can actually hear a crackling sound and that's because of the gas that the bacteria is producing. And so it eventually um, leads to it leads to this. And the other symptoms are usually just symptoms that are associated with infection in general. So this is going to be fever, pain around this infected area, and swelling. And what's interesting is about this bacteria is that it's very fast acting. So the incubation period is only a couple of hours and it only takes about six to 24 hours for severe symptoms to actually develop. And if left untreated, then in 24 to 48 hours, death is usually the end result. So to diagnose, a lot of times doctors will run blood tests to see elevated white blood cell counts. They'll admit the patient into surgery just to see how far the gangrene has actually spread. They'll do a fluid or tissue culture in, in which they they're just looking for the presence of the bacteria C perfringens, or they'll they'll do imaging techniques. So over here is a picture of an infected individual, and this is a CT scan. And as you can see, there are these deposits in the leg. This is actually the gas that's being produced. So to treat gas gangrene, a lot of times doctors will prescribe IV antibiotics or they'll place the patient in this hyperbaric oxygen chamber as shown in this picture right here and it's really just a chamber of very pressurized oxygen and this increases blood flow to the infected sites but the most effective um, course of treatment is just amputation. Sometimes if it's caught in time and it's not as uh, progressed, then they can just take out a particular portion of the skin and do a skin graft. But most of the time, gas gangrene does end in amputation. And sometimes the research, um, I mean, the doctors won't even have enough time to actually diagnose gas gangrene just because it's such a fast bacteria. So they'll just go straight to treatment. To prevent gas gangrene, hospitals have to take extra precaution to clean surgical wounds and tools since these um, surgical patients are the ones who are primarily um, affected by gas gangrene just because surgery results in just these uh, deeper tissue layers being exposed. The, pers um, the patient, whenever they leave surgery, has to watch out for signs of infection. But the good news is that this bacteria can't be con transmitted from person to person, so this particular individual who has gas gangrene doesn't actually have to be isolated from anybody else. Outbreaks of gas gangrene are common usually during war times. In, for example, in World War I, gas gangrene attributed to 11% of the mortality of the people who died in World War I, in World War II it was 0.9%, and in the Vietnam War it was 0.016%. So as the years progressed, um, people have been better at preventing gas gangrene. More recent outbreaks occurred in 2004 and 2008, but they were very minor outbreaks. Um, so in 2004, there was a tsunami in Indonesia, and a lot of people got injured, and it was just because of that, um, the injury and the contaminated water that attributed to the development of gas gangrene. And in 2008, there was an earthquake in China, and about 0.9% of the individuals who were injured developed gas gangrene. So it wasn't, it wasn't a very big outbreak. And there are only about 3,000 cases in the United States reported every year. Gas gangrene um, research today is more focused on the pathogenesis of this particular bacteria just because the toxins are very, um, the functions of the toxins are just very ambiguous and so they're focusing mostly on toxin research. But they're also looking for a better treatment than amputation just because amputation is such a radical method of treatment. They're trying to see if there's any 
antibiotics that can kill these bacteria fast enough just because the bacteria has such a fast reproductive rate. So here are my sources and thanks for watching and I'll see you guys Monday.